Hello, in this school grad video, we're going to talk about studying in Stanford University in California. Stanford University has one of the most beautiful campuses and it's a really large, beautiful campus and it's one of the most prestigious universities of the world. Stanford offers MBA, Masters in Engineering, PhD programs, a very famous medical school and law school too. It has a very interesting history and um, is one of the most sought after universities to study in. Let's take a look at Stanford University. First of all, location of Northern California. So where is Stanford located? So California is the state. This is a map of the United States. California is over here and in the northern part of California, in the Bay Area over here, we have the, um, a lot of interesting cities like San Francisco, San Jose, and there's a city here named Palo Alto and Stanford. So that is where Stanford University is located. So it's in the Pacific time zone. So which are the states neighboring California? So if this is California, on the north we have Oregon, and to the east we have Nevada, and you know Las Vegas is over here, and then um, and to the south we have the country of Mexico, and on the west we have the Pacific Ocean. So this um, part over here is the San Francisco Bay Area. And in the south here we have, um, you know, uh, places like Los Angeles and uh, San Diego. This is Southern California. And this is Northern California. So the Bay Area over here is called the Silicon Valley of California. And um, Silicon Valley is where all these um, semiconductor companies are located. And it's where all the top uh, IT companies are located. And about 40% of the Indian IT workforce in the U.S. is located in California Bay Area. So... So, so basically, um, let's take a look at uh, some of the places to visit here and, you know, where Stanford University is located. So these, this is an enlarged map of the California Bay Area. So it's called the Bay Area because of the San Francisco Bay, which is located here. So um, here we have San Francisco. And uh, if you're flying to the Bay Area, you'll either fly to San Francisco Airport or mostly to... Um, mostly to San Francisco, which has the maximum number of international flights, or you would fly to like San Jose. It has another international airport here. So from San, o San Francisco to San Jose is about like a one hour drive. And um, next to San Jose, you know, this is a map of all the counties over here. So this is called the Santa Clara County. Santa Clara is the name of a city and also the county. So in this county, we have San Jose and then uh, like a few miles away, about 10-20 miles away, we have Sunnyvale and next to that is like Mountain View and next to that is Palo Alto. So these are all the places here. And then, um, so uh, in Palo Alto we have Stanford University. And these are some of the quick facts, interesting, interesting facts about California. So one out of every eight U.S. residents lives in California. One eighth of the U.S. population lives in California. So it's highly populous. So I've lived in various different cities in my life during the you know many, many years I've spent in the U.S. So um, if you see places like Michigan or like um, Atlanta or you know so many other places, they're more like spread out and they're not as crowded. But then you don't see you know too many jobs and companies there either. In Santa Clara, like uh, you know in the uh, San Jose Bay Area, you'll see companies at like every corner. So many jobs, so many opportunities. But it's like very, very crowded. So... It's a very, you know, uh, happening, vibrant city with, uh, you know, a lot of interesting activities happening all the time. So, um, it is the largest economy of the U.S., the California economy. If California's economic size were measured by itself to other countries, it would rank the seventh largest economy in the world. California alone would be like the seventh largest economy in the world. And um, so, uh, there are a lot of interesting places to visit, you know, a lot of beaches, national parks. Uh, very interesting, uh, you know, concerts and um, uh, cultural activities, religious organizations. Everything is here in the California Bay Area. If you're an Indian and if you're coming here for higher studies, you won't miss India much at all. Pretty much whatever you get in India, you get here. I mean, um, the cost of living is very high. The house rent I'm talking about, you know, call, like uh, renting a house or buying a house is really, really expensive. But uh, the groceries and the... If you're buying like vegetables or food or anything, it's like pretty much the same as anywhere else in the U.S. So that part is not expensive. It's only the house rent that's really expensive. So this is the uh, logo of Stanford University. 
It's got this Christmas tree in here. There are some interesting facts about Stanford University. So, if you want to be a billionaire, Stanford might be the place for you to start. 30 living billionaires and 17 current astronauts went to Stanford. At least one Stanford student has won a medal in the Olympics every year since 1908. Until the year 1930, all Stanford tuition was free. Wow, I wish we could go back to those days. Now the tuition is around $50,000 per annum. Stanford has more bikes registered on campus than students. Now the campus, you know, on Stanford is like really, really huge. So, um, uh, there are more bikes than students. So what would they do with all those bikes? I think it's for people to get from one place to another. It's like you bike around and drop the bike somewhere else, you know, that kind. Um, the motto of Stanford University is the Luft der Freiheit Wheat. So that is translated from German. This quotation means the wind of freedom blows. So, some more trivia. Stanford has many successful sport teams. Stanford students have won medals in every Olympic game since 1908, uh, winning 244 Olympic medals total and 129 gold medals in all. Yeah, that's a lot. In the 2008 Beijing Olympic Games, Stanford won more uh, Olympic medals than any other university in the U.S. On the first full moon of the autumn quarter, all the freshmen get a surprise. So if you join here for fall semester, the arm, so on the first full moon, <laughs> there's kind of a tradition. The seniors give the new freshmen a kiss between midnight and one o'clock. And it's more like an undergrad thing, it may not really happen for grads, I don't know, but then it's kind of like a Stanford tradition that they try to keep up. This is a huge celebration with a lot of uh, kissing and partying. So, Stanford campus. Campus about um, more than 8,000 acres located in Stanford near Palo Alto. Stanford University is spread across a sprawling um, 8,100 acre campus. It has seven schools imparting courses in humanities, sciences, business, education, engineering, law, and medicine. It has an annual enrollment of more than 15,000 students. A huge mall is also inside the Stanford campus with Macy's, JCPenney, other outlets and other organic grocery stores right in the middle of the campus. <laughs> the Cardinal Football Stadium, opened in 2006, can accommodate about 50,000 people in it. It's a really big stadium in Stanford University campus. So let's talk about the history of Stanford University. So, uh, so there was this gentleman, Leland Stanford, who, uh, you know, later on became the ca governor of California. So, you know, more than a century ago, I guess. He grew up and studied law in New York, moved west after the gold rush. So, as you know, there was a big gold rush and a lot of people came to San Francisco Bay Area to hunt for gold. And like many of his wealthy contemporaries, made his fortune in the railroads. He was a leader of the Republican Party, governor of California, and later a US, U.S. senator. In 1876, so former California governor Leland Stanford had purchased 650 acres of Rancho San Francisco for a country home and began the development of his famous Palo Alto stock farm. So originally he bought this huge land more than a century ago to develop a uh, farm with a lot of cows and dairy. He later bought adjoining properties totaling more than 8,000 acres. They lost their only son who was studying at Harvard University uh, for a year to typhoid. So um, their 15 year old son, their, their only son succumbed, he died and they wanted to um, try and you know do something in his memory. So this is the story okay, I mean some people believe it and some people don't but this is a very famous story. So, well, it's true that they had a son and they lost the 15-year-old son to typhoid, but then this, this part is the story where, you know, a lady in a faded gray dress and her husband dressed in a homespun suit walked in timidly without an appointment into the Harvard University president's outer office. So that's what the you know, legend says. So, you know, a couple who looked like very simple and not very rich, from a, like a country background, they walked into Harvard University to meet the president of Harvard University. 
The secretary could tell in the moment that such backwards country hicks had no business at Harvard and probably didn't even deserve to be in Harvard. So we want to see the president, the man said softly. He'll be busy all day, the secretary snapped. We'll wait, the lady replied. And then they just um, sat there. The secretary kept ignoring him, you know, it says. And then she hoped they would go away. But after a long time, they didn't move. And then the secretary grew frustrated and finally decided to disturb the president. I believe she went to the president of Harvard University and said, you know, there's this uh, really rustic couple sitting there. Maybe if you'll see them for a few minutes, they may leave. Then the president, stern-faced and with dignity, strutted toward the couple. The lady told him, We had a son who attended Harvard for one year. He loved Harvard. He was happy here, but about a year ago he died. My husband and I would like to erect a memorial to him somewhere on this campus. The president was kind of shocked. Madam, he said gruffly, we can't put up a statue for every person who attended Harvard and died. If we did that, this place would look like a cemetery. Oh no, the lady explained quickly, we don't want to erect a statue. We thought we would like to give donate a building to Harvard in his memory. And the president rolled his eyes and exclaimed, a building? Do you have any earthly idea how much a building costs? We have over $7.5 million in the physical buildings here at Harvard. For a moment, the lady was silent. The president was pleased. Maybe he could get rid of them now. The lady turned to her husband and said quietly, Is that all it costs to start a university? Why don't we just start our own? And her husband nodded. The president's face wilted in confusion and bewilderment. So, Mr. and Mrs. Leland Stanford got up and walked away, traveling to Palo Alto, California, where they established a university that bears their name, Stanford University, a memorial to a son that Harvard no longer cared about. So that's the story. And uh, basically, Governor Leland Stanford and his wife, they built Stanford University in memory of their 15-year-old son whom they lost. So the Stanfords resolved to give other young adults the opportunity that their son never had. Shortly after the opening of the university, Jane Lathrop Stanford was widowed, and the Stanford dream rested slowly in her heart on her shoulders. So Governor Leland Stanford died, and his widow, um, Jane was the one who had to continue his dream of setting up this university. She was an indefa indefatigable advocate for educating youth and building a prominent university for them, so much so that she was willing to sell her personal jewelry to fund the university. The university struggled financially after Leland Stanford's 1893 death, and again after much of the campus was damaged by the 1906 San Francisco earthquake. No other university was born out of as great love and determination as that of Jane Stanford. So Jane Stanford had a clause in the Stanford uh, University added to the founding grant, the legal requirement that the number of women attending the university as students shall not exceed 500. So this was like more than a century ago, I guess. She didn't want more than 500 women students at any time because... She thought if there's going to be large numbers of women attending, it would lead the school to become the vassal of the best. She felt like it wouldn't let the men concentrate or something and felt that it would, be an, would not be an appropriate memorial for her son. In 1933, the trustees specified an undergraduate male-to-female ratio of 3 to 1. So that was the law in those days, in 1933. Uh, they changed it to say not more, you can have more than 500 women, but you know, they can only be about one-third of the total students. By the late 1960s, the ratio was about 2 is to 1 for undergraduates, and in 1973, the university trustees successfully petitioned the courts to have the restriction formally removed. As of now, the undergraduate enrollment is about 47.2% women, 52.8% men, and graduate level, we have about 38% women and 62% men. So now you can have, you know, any number of women in Stanford. But this is just a brief history of the university. Some more quick facts about Stanford. As of the year 2016, it had about 2,153 faculty members, 21 Nobel laureates, currently members of the Stanford community, 4 is to 1 student to faculty ratio. So for every, students, every 4 students, approximately, there is a professor. And uh, 
campus is really big and nearly 700 major buildings, over 40 departments, 97% of undergraduates live on campus. So let's talk about the department rankings as of the year 2016. So, you know, different uh, systems of ranking allow different ranks. So U.S. News will give a different rank and Princeton Review might give a different rank, but this is just a general idea of what the ranking is like. And remember, it keeps varying every year. So the business school for the MBA program, it's ranked top four in the U.S. Computer science, top two in the U.S. Electrical engineering, number one in the U.S. Mechanical engineering, number one in the U.S. Chemical engineering, number five in the U.S. Civil engineering, number four in the U.S. Medical school, number two in the U.S. Law school, number two in the U.S. for JD program. And this is for MD. We're talking about grad school rankings. So, so this is the Stanford Graduate Business School. So um, it's a very beautiful campus and ranked fourth in the U.S. for MBA. And they have a very competitive process for admissions. They usually have not more than about 7 to 10% acceptance rate. So uh, class size, approximately 400 students, 407 students. So 40% of them are American, 40% international, and about 20% of them are U.S. minority. The average GMAT score was approximately 733. The range, you know, between 570 to 800. So you have to have a really good GMAT score to get into Stanford. Acceptance rate, only 7.1%. So if 100 people apply, imagine only 7 people get in. And they don't have to give you a reason to reject. They can just say, you know, we have you know, better applicants, that kind. So remember, if you're applying to Stanford, you have to make sure your application is really almost like perfect and you made a real effort to impress the admissions committee. Average UGPA, undergraduate GPA for applicants to MBA is approximately 3.7. Student profile. Approximately four years of work experience on an average. And the work experience may range from zero to 17 years. So annual tuition, approximately $57,300 per annum. And the average salary after graduation for MBA grads from Stanford, approximately $125,000 as of the year 2016. Internships and jobs. So where do these MBA uh, graduates from Stanford get jobs? So there's... Companies, amazing companies like Amazon, American Airlines, American Express, AT&T, Apple, Audible, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Although it's a non-profit, they do pay competitive salaries. Burger King, Cisco, Caterpillar, Comcast, that's the internet provider company. Coursera, which provides, you know, lots of courses online for free and also paid courses. Disney, Deloitte, Delta Airlines, EMC Corporation, Expedia. General Electric, Gap, General Motors, Genentech, Goldman Sachs, Humana, KPMG for consulting, JP Morgan Chase, Khan Academy, you know, where uh, they provide all these amazing videos, you know, tutorials for free. LinkedIn, SanDisk, that's the hard disk company. Robert Bosch, Seagate, Tesla Motors, it's a manufacturing company, etc. So these are some of the top uh, companies where they work after graduate with, with an MBA and also um, a lot of uh, entrepreneurs evolve from the Stanford MBA. Most people go there for a networking opportunity and they start their own, you know, startup companies. So there's the interesting fellowship that I'd like to talk about is the Reliance Dhirubhai Fellowship. So we all have heard of the Reliance Industries in India and, you know, India's richest man, Mukesh Ambani and his brother Anil Ambani, they lead these, uh, you know, kind of, you know, multiple companies of the Reliance Group. And then the Reliance Dhirubhai Fellowship Program offers financial aid to Indian students to study MBA at Stanford. Each year, Stanford may award up to five fellowships. Stanford Reliance Dhirubhai Fellows will receive financial support for the cost of tuition and associated fees for each of the two years of Stanford MBA, approximately $150,000 total fellowship spanning over two years. So your entire MBA cost will be covered. Plus, I think you can also have some money to, uh, you know, meet your living expenses, I guess. But the tuition itself is quite expensive, remember. So 
Within two years of completing their Stanford MBA, Reliance Dhirubhai Fellows are required to return to India for at least two years to work for an Indian organization. So that's the catch, but it's a small price to pay. And if you want to go back to India anyway, so it's like good for you. Upon their return to India, Reliance Dhirubhai Fellows are integral members of Stanford University, Stanford Graduate School of Business, and Reliance Dhirubhai Fellows communities. So uh, if you're applying from India, you have a really good GMAT score. I think it may be for like, you know, financially needy students. Uh, and, you know, uh, it, it's, it, it is also a factor of like, you know, how deserving they are and also how competent they are. I'm sure there are a lot of factors that determine, you know, who gets these fellowships, but you can always apply. A lot of people don't know about this, so I thought I would mention it. And so the Stanford Entrepreneurs. Most people do an MBA at Stanford, Harvard or Wharton for the networking opportunity. So it's the culture for encouraging and nourishing its entrepreneurial spirits in the students. Faculty alumni have founded so many prominent companies. So a lot of these famous companies were founded by Stanford alumni. That includes Google, Hewlett Packard, Nike, Sun Microsystems, Wipro, Gap, Firefox, PayPal, Yahoo, etc., and companies founded by Stanford alumni generate over 2.7 trillion in annual revenue, equivalent to the 10th largest economy of the world. The Sun in Sun Microsystems originally stood for Stanford University Network. Isn't that interesting to know? Forbes magazine has gone on record remarking, it's almost impossible to name a leading edge company in Silicon Valley that isn't closely associated with Stanford. Stanford Computer Science Department. So that was all about the Stanford MBA program in the business school. Now let's talk about the Computer Science Department. So this is the building, Computer Science Department building. Ranked top two in US in 2006, the Stanford Computer Science Department was founded in 1965. Stanford Computer Science, the Gates Computer Science Building was completed in January 1996 and is the home of the Computer Science Department and the Computer Systems Laboratory, CSL. The 150,000 square feet building houses, 550 faculty, staff and students and costs $38 million to build and furnish. So Bill Gates was one of the donors and um, it's a huge building. The Gates Building is named for Bill Gates who gave $6 million gift for the project. The Gates Building was designed to promote interaction. Previously, CSD and CSL were located in 11 different buildings both on campus and off. Now scientists can exchange ideas with colleagues by walking just a few steps. It's all in one building. So that was a very generous donation from the Bill Gates Foundation. So this is, uh, these are some facts about the computer science department. Ranked number two in computer science for US, in US. And then class size approximately 574 for undergrads and about 519 postgrads, including masters and PhD students. So that's a lot of students. These are very big departments. Some universities might have just, you know, 40, 50 students, but Stanford has more, almost more than 500 students. So it's a good networking opportunity. Average GRE score is about 166. Acceptance rate about 19.2%. So of 1,500 applications received each year. It's very competitive. Annual tuition, about $45,000. Funding, so tuition scholarships, there's financial aid loans, there's travel fellowships, paid internships, part-time work, fellowships, grants. There's all kinds of financial support available. But for international students, your best bet is to have a teaching assistantship or a research assistantship. And if you have a tuition waiver, even if it's partial tuition waiver, it can make a lot of difference in your career. Internships and jobs. Google and Facebook fight hard to hire the best computer science graduates. MS students are often offered between you know, 130K or more per annum. Starting salary, approximately about $83,000 per annum. So most of the Silicon Valley companies uh, fight to hire these graduates. So Stanford, you know, you can also do a computer science and JD dual degree. Not many people know about this, but law students interested in pursuing masters in computer science must apply for admission to CS department either concurrently with applying to law school or after being admitted to the law school but within a specified frame, time frame. 
So if you're also like a part of the computer science department, you do decide to do a JD degree, you can apply for to both departments, and if you get admission in both, you can pursue like and graduate with like a CS and JD degree total in uh, about I guess four or five years because the JD program, remember, it takes at least three years, and the computer science department. So if you combine the two together, you may be able to do it in about four years or four and a half years. It's actually really good to have. So you'll have knowledge of law and also computer science. So. And um, now let's talk about the electrical engineering department. So this is a picture of the electrical engineering department. And it's founded in the year 1893, more than a century ago. So David Packard, co-founder of HP, donated to establish a building that is named after him. Is ranked number one in the U.S. currently. Stanford Electrical Engineering, some facts. So ranked number one in the U.S. for electrical engineering, master's program. So class size as of the year 2000, um, so as of the year 2015, they conferred about uh, 289 degrees, including master's and PhD. So bachelor's of science about 40, master's of science 194, and PhD about 55. Currently about 84 active faculty members in the electrical engineering department. Acceptance rate 19.2%, average GRE score 166, annual tuition about $45,000. Average starting salary about eighty nine thousand five hundred. Funding and scholarships. Uh, so for a PhD they have fee waiver and full financial support. For MS they have you know so for deserving students they give fee waivers, federal student loans, assistantships, outside funding, emergency funding. There's all kinds of scholarships. But for international students again your best bet is to have a teaching assistantship or research assistantship along with you know tuition waiver. Internships and jobs. So there's something called BEAM, that is Bridging Education, Ambition, and Meaningful Work, is the Stanford Career Development Center. So again, a lot of these Silicon Valley companies employ these, you know, graduates from these departments. Companies founded by Stanford E people include VMware. So several Stanford Electrical Engineering faculty established VMware, a company that provides cloud and virtualization software and services. Yahoo. So there's... Jerry Yang and David Filo were electrical engineering graduate students when they created a website named Jerry and David's Guide to the World Wide Web. It was a directory of other websites organized in a hierarchy as opposed to a searchable index of pages. A few months later, the site was renamed Yahoo. So Yahoo and VMware were developed by Stanford Electrical Engineering alumni. Now let's talk about the mechanical engineering department. So this is a picture of the Mechanical Engineering Department of Stanford University. It's currently ranked number one in the U.S. for Mechanical Engineering, Master's Program. So class size, approximately 159 and 171 undergraduate students and about 539 Master's and PhD students. Acceptance rate about 19.2%. Average undergraduate GPA about 3.8 on a scale of 4. Average GRE score 166. Uh, annual tuition about $45,000. Average starting salary $77,300. Stanford Mechanical Engineering. So, funding and scholarships. Stanford graduate fellowships and research assistantships are available. So, internships and jobs. Graduates work in research and development in industry or as consultants, hardware engineers, research assistants for the government, mechanical engineers, and manufacturing engineers. So, Lockheed Martin, Boston Consulting Group. Boeing, Acumen Medical, and the National Institute of Health. These are some of the uh, top employers for mechanical engineering graduates of Stanford University. Chemical Engineering. Masters is ranked top five in the U.S. Was functional as far back as in 1891. So it's a really old department. This is the Chemical Engineering Department of Stanford University. So ranked fifth in the U.S. for chemical engineering. Class size, 74 undergraduates, 144 masters and PhD students. Acceptance rate, 19.2%. Average GRE score, 166. Average undergraduate GPA, 3.5. Annual tuition, about $45,000. Average salary, about $52,000. Funding and scholarships. They do offer fellowships and research assistantships. Now let's talk about the civil engineering department. So this is the civil engineering department of Stanford University. Ranked the top four in the U.S. So class size during fall 2014, they had about 36 undergrads and, well, 
Yeah, well, I'm not sure about the number of postgraduate students, but you, you're, better, you're better off looking it up in the university website. Uh, sorry about that. So acceptance rate about 19.2%, and then average GRE score about 166, and then average undergraduate GPA about 3.5, annual tuition 45,000, average starting salary about 58,000. Stanford Law School. So this is a picture of the law school building of Stanford University. Ranked top two in the U.S. for JD program. Law school at Stanford University has 93 full and part-time faculty on staff. Students can chart their own academic course at Stanford Law School. There are more than 25 joint degree options offered in conjunction with other schools at Stanford University. The full-time program application fee uh, for law school was $100 as of the year 2016. Full-time tuition approximately $56,000 per annum. Student faculty ratio about uh, 7.3 is to 1. So for every 7.3 students, there's one faculty member. So the financial aid. Nearly 80% of students receive some form of financial aid with the average fellowship portion per student estimated about you know $23,500 annually. Students who choose public service careers may also be eligible for annual fellowships, funding for summer work, and generous loan repayment options. So these are some interesting facts about Stanford Law School. So Amanda Brown wrote Legally Blonde based on her experiences at Stanford Law School. So we've all heard of this uh, famous um, movie, Legally Blonde. So it was written about Amanda Brown's experiences at Stanford Law School. Now let's talk about the Stanford University Medical School. So for MD, it's a four-year program. Uh, MD candidates, including dual degree students, about 383 as of the year 2016. So there's MD PhD candidates, about 90. PhD candidates, about 786. So um, um, this is a picture of the medical school at Stanford University. Ranked number two for MD in the US. Acceptance rate about 2.6%, very, very competitive. Average MCAT score, so MCAT is Medical College Admission Test. It's the entrance exam for medical school MD, and average score is about uh, 35. Uh, I think it's out of 36, I'm not really sure, but it's a very high score you need to get in there. Average undergraduate GPA, about 3.85 on a scale of 4, very competitive. Annual tuition, about $52,000. Average starting salary about one hundred fifty fifteen thousand dollars for an MD, you know, for a doctor. Internships and jobs. So students are also offered a rigorous two-week program in medicine at the world-renowned Stanford University. Fascinating hands-on experiences such as performing bedside ultrasounds, dissections, suturing, splinting. So you know, if you're a student, you can just go there for like a two-week program and you know learn all these things hands-on. That's what I'm trying to talk about. Visits to Stanford. Emergency life flight station and uh, a lot of you know free shadowing the doctors and all these programs are available for like high school students and undergrads who want to know what it's like to study in Stanford University. So um, talk about the medical school. So William Hewlett and David Packard. So that's you know Hewlett Packard HP graduated from Stanford in 1934 and founded HP. Lucille Packard Children's Hospital. Stanford was founded in 1991 after a $40 million donation in 1986 from David and Lucille Packard. And since then, LPCH, that's Lucille Packard Children's Hospital, has become one of the nation's most prominent children's hospitals. Staffed by more than 650 physicians and about 4,750 staff and volunteers, it specializes in the care of babies, children, adolescents, and expectant mothers. In 1996, LPCH merged with the Stanford University Medical Center and the Lucille Salter Packard Foundation, was established as an independent public charity to ensure a continuous source of dedicated funding and support for the health and well-being of children. Stanford MD-MBA Dual Degree Program Students enrolled in the Dual Degree Program MD-MBA at Stanford University are required to pay 12 quarters of full MD tuition and 5 quarters of the MBA tuition. So the students are admitted to Graduate School of Business after completing 3 years at the medical school. Students are expected to complete five quarters in this program, one full year at the Graduate School of Business and two quarters, winters and spring, in the following academic year. So, Graduate School of Business tuition is built accordingly. So, some famous alumni from Stanford University. You know, these are from various different departments. 
There's Norman Abramson, who had a PhD in electrical engineering, 2007. Alexander Graham Bell, uh, Alexander Graham Bell Prize winner. So he, Norman Abramson is the Alexander Graham Bell Prize winner. Developed the world's first wireless computer communication network, AlohaNet. Anand Agarwal, PhD in electrical engineering, president of edX at MIT. Rosanna Baxi, a PhD in computer science, winner of the 2009 Benjamin Franklin Medal in Computer and Cognitive Science. Andy Bechholzheim, a PhD dropout, designer of the first uh, network Sun workstation. Sergey Brin, MS from Stanford, developer of Google search engine, Marconi Prize winner. David Box, PhD, co-inventor of the Ethernet. So, uh, Stanford list of alumni includes world leaders, two former Japanese prime ministers, former US, US President Herbert, Ho Herbert Hoover, former Israeli Prime Minister Ehud Barak, former Peruvian President Alejandro Toledo, former President of Guatemala, Jorge Serrano Elias, President of the Maldives, Mohammad Wahid Hassan, former Vice President of Iran, Mohammad Reza Arev, former Honduras President Ricardo Maduro, Crown Pins of Benjamin, former Ghanaian president John Atta Mills. There are a lot of famous alumni. So let's talk about the top companies in the California Bay Area where a lot of Stanford graduates get employment. There's Google, Facebook, Apple, Zynga, Palo Alto Networks, Cisco, Variant Medical Systems, Symantec, Intel, Intuit. These are some of the top employers. So let's talk about some of the Indian restaurants near Stanford. So there's Darbar, there's Komal Villas, Anand Bhavan, Bombay Garden, Shad Bhavan, Tava Indian Kitchen, there's Didi's, and uh, cost of living near Stanford. So monthly rent as of the year 2016 for a studio in Stanford, you know, a studio, a small studio costs about $2,100 to $2,800 per month. One bedroom, one bath apartment is about $2,600 to $3,200 per month. Two bed, two bath apartment is about three thousand to four thousand dollars rent per month. It's very, very expensive. So some more Indian restaurants. Uh, we've already been over these actually. So, in addition to the ones I mentioned, there's this Nirvana ice cream parlor. I go there very frequently. They have gelatin-free ice cream in various flavors. And there's um, Annapurna's. There's Mayuri Indian cuisine, Madhuban Indian cuisine. Uh, lots and lots of Indian restaurants. So this brings us to the end of this. Uh, video about what it's like to study in Stanford University and I hope you found this useful. Thank you.